All right, hello everyone. This is the first video on how to simplify with negative exponents. So we're introducing a new rule, as you can see right here. When I have a negative exponent, that's you can't have a negative exponent in your final simplified answer. So if I have something like a raised to the negative second, in order to make that exponent positive, or in this case a positive 2, I need to put that on the opposite side of the fraction bar, okay? On the opposite side of the fraction bar. I think the best way to explain this um, and, to, and to get a taste of this is to go through an example problem. So my expression right here, all right, there's a couple different ways you can approach this. What I'm going to do first, all right, is tackle uh, my coefficient, all right? So in this case, I have negative 2 raised to the third power. Now, it's important to note here, when you have negative 2 raised to the third, the exponent is not negative, right? The exponent's not negative, so you don't need to put it on the opposite side of the fraction bar, all right? When you're simplifying negative 2 to the third, really what you're doing first is you're taking 2 to the third power and then taking the opposite value of that. Or in other words, you could think of it like this, negative 1 times 2 to the third, all right? Which in that case, 2 to the third is 8, and negative 1 times 8 is equal to negative 8, all right? So that's going to be in my numerator up here, all right? So again, it's only when the exponent is negative that you put it on the opposite side of the fraction bar. All right, now let's take a look to see, excuse me, let's take a look at our x value. So I have x to the negative second over x to the fourth. Now again, there's a couple different ways you can approach it. I think for most students, this is the simplest way to think about it, right? We're actually going to use our quotient rule where we take, uh, again, when we're dividing by the same base, which in this case is x, we subtract our exponents and negative two minus four so again, x, and I'm taking negative 2 minus 4, just like my rule over here, is actually going to be x to the negative 6. Okay, so that's, that's taking care of my x value. Now, let's take a look at my y values. Now, in the denominator, I just have a y. But remember, when there's no exponent already written, you have to put in that ninja 1. Okay, you got to put in that ninja 1. So I have y to the 4th over y to the 1st. Again, what do I do with my exponents? When I'm dividing by the same base, I subtract them. So I get y to the 3rd. Four minus, uh, 4 minus 1 is 3. And then lastly, I have this z in the denominator right here. And that's actually z to the first. Now, I don't have any other z's in my expression, but that's okay. That actually makes our job really easy. We can just leave it as is. But this is not a simplified answer. Sorry, and I should mark that as orange. This is not our simplified answer. Because if you notice right here, the x is raised to the negative sixth power. I can't have that. I can't have a negative exponent. So in order to fully simplify it, okay, I need to bring it to the denominator on the opposite side of the fraction bar, and then its exponent becomes positive. So then my final answer should be negative 8 times y to the third all over z times x to the sixth. Okay? And that's my final answer. Again, the, the critical part on this problem was recognizing that when you have a negative exponent after applying we after we applied our quotient rule, you can't leave it like this. You can't leave it like that. You have to, when you have a negative exponent, you have to put it on the opposite side of the fraction bar. We're going to go through another practice problem like this in the next video. Thanks.